Hello everybody and welcome to my review of volume number four of Natsumi Akatsuki's light novel series Konosuba, God's Blessing on This Wonderful World. Now in this volume we pick up eh, probably about a month or two after the events of volume number three. Kazuma and company are enjoying a relaxed life. Uh, they've spent most of their time indoors to wait out the cold winter months. I mean, there's not a lot of adventuring to do apparently because hey, even monsters don't really like being out when it's cold. Kazuma being an industrious young man and thinking that part of his continued fortunes will to be bringing items from his world and developing them and selling them in this new world, one of his first creations in these cold months, of course, has been a kotatsu, which, if you're not uh, familiar, it's actually just basically a table with this really heavy blanket over top, and there's usually like a warmer under. It's a nice way to keep yourself cozy during those cold winter months, uh, so much so that uh, Kazuma hasn't done much but uh, lay down underneath the thing for the whole time. But of course the spring thaw is coming and that means adventuring to be done and Megumin is, well, she's anxious to get out there because she hasn't been able to blow anything up. And the Shimura does manage to finally drag Kazuma, Aqua, and Darkness out. And, well, let's just say that Kazuma, through his usual hijinks, or the hijinks caused by his teammates, ends up meeting the goddess Eris in the afterlife once more. He is revived, but uh, because he's been injured, obviously, uh, Megumin says, hey, you know what, why don't we go to this city where they have these really healing hot springs? Of course, Ak was very much into this because as it turns out, this is the home base for the Axis Church, which are the followers of the goddess Aqua. So our team heads on out there, but as they arrive, they begin to discover that maybe there's something afoot in the town. And it's not just the crazy Axis Church followers. As usual, Konosuba is pretty light on the plot points here. I mean, really, I'd say probably the biggest point of plot is getting them to the city itself. There's really not much in the way of mystery as to who exactly is doing what uh, in terms of who are the villains in this particular volume. Uh, we do have at least a character introduced that we don't do much with, so there's at least some hinting of a major role to be played by someone down the road who potentially could become an actual ongoing villain as opposed to, well, just about every other opponent that the team has faced that they've managed to defeat uh, or make an ally. Uh, this one, they drag Wiz along with them, which I really enjoyed, actually. I like Wiz's character. I, I like that she is seems to be the most capable person. She might be horrible at business, but when it comes to actually being an adventurer or basically just being a functional adult, she seems to be pretty much the most capable of the lot of them. And we also get to see Wiz unleash a little bit, uh, and, uh, yeah, she's, she's impressive. I, I do like Wiz. I do like her character. And, and of course, her and Aqua are always a entertaining pair, to say the least. Uh, you know what? It's filled with her usual laughs that you're always going to expect from Konosuba. As I said, the there's not a lot of plot per se. In fact, this whole going to a place of hot springs pretty much plays out the same way that the Let's Go to the Beach episodes do of pretty much every anime that you have ever seen. Uh, the, you know, in this volume, let's put it this way, because they're in a hot springs, there's actually colored manga pages that are at the back as opposed to just having the colored artwork in the front which of course ends up with the girls in well you know all sorts of manners of undress uh there's a whole middle page two page spread dedicated to the same thing of course the jokes of it all is that most of these things that are depicted are nothing but imaginings they don't even happen in the book um 
Which I think is kind of, well, I mean, it's typical Konosube. It's, it's just poking fun at this sort of isekai type, let's be adventurers kind of thing. Uh, there's not a lot in terms of character development. It is kind of interesting, though, of course, to see just what kind of people worship Aqua. And it's, it's pretty much as horrible as you think. <laughs> and... And for, and it's, it's perfect, honestly, like just the way that they behave is, is perfect and, and makes a lot of sense given Aqua and her personality. So if you've liked Konosuba up to this point, zero reason that you're not going to enjoy this volume. As I said, there's lots of good jokes, uh, you know, including Wiz and in sort of the, the mix, of course creates a whole new sort of straight man for Aqua's hilarity and inadvertent accidents. Uh, you know, with it, it, I like that sort of spicing it up a little bit. Uh, it was kind of nice to see our characters get out of side of Axel. So we have slightly different scenery, even if a lot of it is just hot springs and water. Um, <laughs> but it, again, it's, it's to me, I guess, you know, We've had three volumes of poor, dirt poor adventurers that are just scraping by. And it was kind of fun, I guess, in this one at this point to see what our characters are like now that they actually have some comfort. And and the truth is, is that they're they're pretty horrible, actually. <laughs> they're, they're probably even worse individuals when they're rich than they are when they're poor. Uh, I mean, it's pretty much a sad thing when Megumin is probably the most emotionally stable of these individuals and is often the reasonable one in the group. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so volume number four of Konosuba, it is more of the same. Lots of laughs, lots of our characters inadvertently doing the right and wrong thing and sometimes doing the right thing because they do the wrong thing or vice versa. Uh, you know, it, it's filled with all sorts of good little gags. And again, it, you know, the plot, we can, we can just forget it. I mean, the, the plot in this, it's very, very thin. There's not a whole lot to it. As I said, it's pretty much just set up so that we go somewhere different and it gives us an excuse to visit hot springs. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So if you've loved Konosuba up to this date, definitely one to read. This is also, I guess it should be pointed out, this is also where the anime ends. So if you've seen the anime, this is the last volume that's covered. So volume five, which will be coming up next, obviously, is going to be where the series picks up. And so it's going to be whatever material is beyond the anime. So if you've watched the anime and you've been holding off and kind of thinking like, I'll hop on board on the volume that, you know, the anime didn't cover... That'll be the next one. Volume number five is going to be what you want to pick up. So those are my thoughts on volume number four of Kono Suba. The next book that I'm going to be reviewing is a brand new volume number one. It's actually one that came out in December that I only got this week because it was on back order. Apparently it was that much in demand or that much underpublished. I'm not sure exactly what the story is, but in any case, it's going to be volume number one of That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime. I, you know what? I'm going to be honest. When this was announced, I didn't have really high hopes for it, but uh, then again, I really thought that the whole uh, So I'm a Spider, So What? I thought that was going to be even worse, and it turned out to be relatively enjoyable. So uh, this is going to be my next one, and I'm slightly elevated expectations just based on past experience with books that I thought were going to be terrible and weren't bad. So that'll be my next review. So if you love light novels and you're brand new to the channel, you should consider subscribing. I do two to three reviews every single week, as well as a weekly countdown of the top 10 best-selling light novels in Japan. Thank you so much for joining me in this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Till then, bye-bye for now.